Hello and welcome to the Game Changers podcast, where you'll hear from extraordinary, trailblazing women in sport. My name's Sue Anstis and I've worked in sport for over 25 years. I'm fascinated by sport's ability to transform people's lives, both on and off the field. And I'm particularly passionate about the power of women's sport to knock down barriers and challenge the status quo. In this episode, you'll hear from former England netball captain, Pamela Cookie. Pamela was a face of England netball for 11 years with 110 caps, and she's still the only player to have won seven league titles. Pamela now commentates on netball at Sky, so we'll be seeing more of her on our screens as we head towards the Netball World Cup in Liverpool later this month. It was fascinating to hear Pamela share her thoughts on the challenges of balancing being an elite international athlete with building her career outside sport. To start the interview, I took her right back to her early days and I asked if she could remember the first time she'd played netball. Way, way back. Um, so first started in primary school, I think it must have been, it was year five, um, and we had a games teacher that kind of just drew us all together. I did all sports when I was younger, Hi. taekwondo, athletics, oh. um, tried ballet for a bit, wasn't very good, <laughs> um, dance, um, just anything to kind of keep active. And um, one of the teachers was just passionate about netball and started a mini team. We didn't play any matches against anybody else, but we just trained together and um then when I went into secondary school, that was when it really developed. Mrs. Shepherd was like, again, it's the teachers. Yes. That's what's so really important, isn't it? So important. And the time that they take outside of school to kind of help you. And um, so that's when I started playing a bit more competitively and um, for school. And from there, got selected um, to be in the Milton Keynes Talent Development Programme. So Louise Gear. now it was a group of... 12 of us from different schools around Milton Keynes. Um, I was at Akeleywood training once a week and then playing in the Women's League. Right. So against, well, I thought really older women when, yeah. when I was that age. But, um, <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, in an outdoor league. And, and that's kind of where it developed. And from there on into county, Maggie Jackson got me into playing for Bedfordshire. And then from there, going to England trials. Yeah. And um, when I was 15... I got selected for the England under-17 wow. team and then my England journey started there. Yeah, and what was it, what do you think about netball that you, you said not, not ballet, but why <laughs> was it not taekwondo or yeah. other sports? What do you think it was about netball for you? I think it was a, the team aspect of it because you were training with multiple people. You, well, I was with my friends, that was the main thing yeah. about it. It was a group of friends having a good time, doing something active and something that I was good at as well. So I, it, my two sports mainly were athletics and, and netball. But the reason I kind of went down that netball room was just the like team. the team aspect yeah. of it, yeah. And when when do you think you realised that you were very good, or you could be very good? <laughs> was there a moment when in play where you suddenly realised that you could reach a bit higher? Um, I guess sport came quite naturally to me. So I thank my parents for the genes <laughs> that they gave. But um, I think that when I realised it was when. I, I always gave something a go. So anything that was put in front of me, I was like, yes, I'll try it. And, and, and when I found that I was getting selected time after time yeah. after time, then I thought, okay, maybe I, I've got something here and it could be developed even further. And you mentioned that obviously at 17, you uh, got the first chance to play, but you you then got an injury, I think, ahead of that first time. How d- did that feel, having got so far? Were you kind of worried that it would knock you back completely? Was that your first chance? Yeah, so, oh God. So um, I played England on 17 for two years I was young enough and then um then got into the national team mm. um that was it when I was in lower sixth and it was literally just the week before we went into the athletes village wow. I the taught Commonwealth games, for the Commonwealth was, games yeah. yeah so in Manchester as well yeah. so it was oh. home so there was big hype around it and everyone was really excited and I was really excited because I'd one of my dreams was to be in the England national senior team before I got to university. Right, right, yeah. So I was about to, yeah. Yeah, so I was about to, to make that dream a reality, and especially because I got so far through the process, being selected, mm. then in the training camp, we'd got all our kit. I didn't, I didn't realise, sorry, I, I kind of read the background tip, but I didn't realise you were right there, yeah. literally, with the kit and everything. <laughs> literally, too. yeah. So all my name on it. So um, Jess Garland t- afterwards took my place yeah. in and she even had to wear my dress. Oh, because she? <laughs> yeah. I didn't have time to change it. So she always oh. says that that's how close <laughs> close it, it was. Um, Jess, that'll oh. be now, sorry. But um, so yeah, so that, that was devastating for me. It was... You know, when you work so hard to try yeah. and do something and then it, it gets taken away from you just like that. Um, and how did you cope with that? I mean, you seem like a very positive mm. person, but, you know, that must have been a massive knockback. 
Oh. Emotionally and mentally for you at that age? Big time, yeah. As I said, lower six, about to start my <laughs> AS levels. And um, I was in boarding school as well then. I'd just started at in Millfield. Millfield yeah. yeah, so away from my parents. Yeah. and But I had such a good support network around me. School was amazing. I was playing for Team Bath at the time. Right. So all the coaches there and the SNC guys, the physios. And I had some fabulous teammates um, that also just really supportive. And... After the operation, it kind of all dawned dawned on me that, okay, you're going to be out for... It's your ACL. ACL, yeah. yeah. You're going to be out for six months, at least, um, sitting on the sideline, just uh, watching all my friends and my teammates doing the sport that I love and not being able to be part of it. That that was really difficult. Um, and do you have any... I say my daughter's just been through that, actually, actually. last year. <laughs> it's not about me. But uh, <laughs> wait, would you give advice, to I guess, to young girls going through that now, that injury, and how do you feel you were able to maintain your positivity to come back? And yeah, stay? I guess mainly it was my faith. I, I knew um, that everything... I started to realise everything happens for a reason. And that's what I kept deep inside of me. And that's what my mum really taught me in terms of that you will overcome whatever challenge comes your way. And for whatever reason, um, now I look back on it, I think it was because I hadn't prepared my body properly to play at that level. And as I said, sport came quite easily to me. So um, I realised I had to do a lot more. It wasn't just about playing. It was all the running and the conditioning side of things that you have to do. But that's what got me out of it. The learn that I would come back. Yes. And that I wasn't, this was just the start of my career yeah. um, and I had lots of positive people around me that kind of helped me and then two years later I did my other one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think coming back from that was harder than yeah. the first one because it was a kind of, well, I've, I've done all that rehab, yeah, I've yeah. gone through the pain and I, but again, your body does amazing things yeah. and your mind to, to come back and to, you just have to go through the motions, you have to, put yourself in into a plan so that's what helped me the most was I had a target so I to get to be able to play I needed to first be able to run to be able to run I needed to first get my strength up to be able to get my strength up I need to do x and you just work your way back from that and then once I had all these goals in my head you had something every time you ticked one it was like a celebration (laughs) and then you work for the next one and do you think that's made you a stronger made you a stronger player stronger person having had those injuries so early in your career definitely definitely um it it's molded me to be the, the person I am because mm-hmm. I know that I can overcome things that happen like that. Yeah. I know that um, if, yes, you do have your... De- and I wouldn't lie, there were times where I, I was sat on the sofa or in bed just thinking, yeah. why me? <laughs> <laughs> why did this have to yeah. happen? And uh, this is not fair and all that kind of thing. But then you, you do just pick yourself out of it because otherwise you're not help to anybody else, yeah. are you? I had a question for you later on, actually, I'm going to ask now as a... But in terms of young girls and injuries, I mean, especially within netball, there seems to be a lot of ACL injuries, Achilles, etc. Do you think enough is being done to research that in terms of more prevalent in female, perhaps, than in the male sports? Yeah, it, and it's true. And I can count. So I'm, there's a couple that have done both knees. Um, some people have only done one. There's quite a few that have this, um, as your daughter as well, yeah, playing... Rugby, yeah. Paris with rugby, rugby, but also yeah, with but basketball. Yeah, yeah, female as well. And it is to do with the hip alignment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's what we had. So I think, I don't think a lot is done early enough to prepare um, girls for that because it's, it's, it is a strain on your body. Yeah. Um, and the stop start in, for netball, um, the collisions in rugby, yeah. that kind of thing does put a lot of strain on your body. So it's about getting that education early enough. And like I said, my first injury kind of triggered that in my head. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I spent a lot more time with our SNC coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, strength to, and conditioning and yep. To make yeah. sure, yeah, that my body was prepped to be able to... Yeah, yeah. Um, work at that level for that length of time and then obviously you then had your chance to come out in your red dress but mm-hmm. turn down the next chance did you is that correct when you were an opportunity to go to New Zealand on tour but you yeah. chose to stay in and study <laughs> that must have been a difficult decision for you then yeah really difficult but um again I think I I, I think my parents were the grounding that they gave me and it was always if you're not doing well at school you're not allowed to play sport okay so um so I had to make sure that I always got my grades up and I made sure that I put enough time in that as well as I did into my sport um and at that time um it was my GCSEs um 
Oh, no, sorry, my A levels. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know more than me. Very, you're very young. Very young. Yeah. Yeah. No, my A levels yeah. exactly. Yeah. And um, netball is not a professional sport as much as I love it. In some, it's getting there now, and I, I'm hoping that this momentum will still continue. Yeah. But at that time, it wasn't. And so for me, it was like my studies are really important in terms of anything could happen. Mm. I might not be able to play. Um, I might not be able to make a career out of netball. So if I didn't have those um, grades to fall back on, then that would be uh, make me a lesser person. And do you think now, if, so if uh, we're not quite professional yet, but we're moving that way, but if this what happened professional, would you have had a different decision? Would you think you would have played full-time immediately? I see, I, think, I don't think I would. <laughs> it's very hard, but yeah. And, and to be honest, I think I, I would have still done, made the same, yeah. same, yeah. Because I think it's good... I've always been an advocate of sport and education. Absolutely, and yeah, I think yeah. to have that balance, and I think also that balance has helped me to get to where I am today. So it wasn't all, all or nothing. I always kind of had the two, whether it was school and netball, uni and netball, or work and netball. Yeah. That's kept me balanced. And in terms of advice to young players, up and coming players, mm. it, would you advise that, that balance yes. of education and your career as well as sports? Yes, I would definitely do it. And you, there's so many crossovers in the two. Yeah. And I think. I've each help each other exactly it makes yeah. me stronger in the other one yeah definitely so when you eventually did get your de- debut out in your red dress etc yeah. was that I think was it um 2004 yes so how did that feel I guess like, you've almost had a bit of a ups and downs on the way to it but mm. can you remember the yeah. kind of walking out representing the country for senior senior representation yeah I, I definitely it's so vivid in my mind um but it was my first cap I played f- all of five minutes oh, yeah. <laughs> That's oh, what I did by other ways. Yeah. I've researched, but not researched enough. Oh, I didn't realise no, that. So, yes, oh, my that, goodness. I, yeah, yeah. So that was two years later. So 2006. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, 2006. Um, but getting... So I've, I've passed a little bit further <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. I've got the kit, and now I can wear the kit. With a name on the back. <laughs> With my name on the back. And, yeah, representing your country to, to just walk out in that massive arena, in the red dress, with your teammates that you've trained so hard with, yeah. wanting to achieve something collectively. It was just a phenomenal experience. And one I really remember, I got scored one from one, I think, so I was on 100% <laughs> at the time. time, time so I, I'm taking that. <laughs> but then, yes, but then unfortunately, um, then that's when I did my other ACL. Yeah. And then it was um, back into rehab again and, and trying to yeah, come back. Again. So when were, you, when were you then back full on playing so, uh, so after that, then I had a great stint of... Um, so I, I came, did my rehab, came back, got selected for the England under-21s. Right, okay. So went to Florida for the World Youth Cup where we got a silver medal. So the Excellent. first silver that any England under-21 team had got. Um, so that was, that was a fabulous experience. And um, that core of players that you've then progressed through with. Yeah, and well. friends for life. Yeah. Literally, I, um, I was texting Louisa Brownfield the other day. We were <laughs> trying to meet up. And so those, those friends and relationships you, you build through netball and through yeah, yeah. sport you, you just take through the rest of your life yeah, yeah. oh that's fantastic mm. and um in terms of obviously we're, we're whizzing through here but then you yeah. you play you're captain you've been captain mm. of a team too and how how did that differ did you ever wish that you could just uh, be a player and not have that responsibility yeah. of captaincy or how, how did you yeah. find captaincy no i loved it because it was your it was my way anyway of, of giving back as well so it wasn't just about me it was about the collective team and I was the link between the players and the coaches and yeah. the media and the support staff and and that just kind of helped develop me as a person yeah. um, and hopefully helped um, the, the team get the results that, that we did get the first time we beat Australia 3-0 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> in a test series. There was lots of different experiences that I had, some very challenging moments and others where you fly by and you're just on that momentum and those lessons that you learn and what you gain back from being part of a team and leading a team, I just loved. I, I really relished and was honoured to be chosen to be in that position. Yeah. And you just mentioned there about that kind of 3 nil whitewash mm-hmm. against Australia that sort of set a precedent for the future. Mm-hmm. And I remember you, you, I think I've read that you've said, but that it was a time that the team kind of clicked together. Mm-hmm. It felt very different. So I wonder if you can t- talk a little bit about why you, why you think that happened at that time, perhaps. Because yeah. it hadn't happened before, people... I think, didn't believe that it could be done. And we were kind of generating and we were on our momentum and Anna Mays Stembridge now was our head coach. And together as a collective group, we, we talked about our bubble. Mm. So it wasn't about anybody else. It wasn't about the opposition. It wasn't about who was doing what. It was about what us as a group could achieve. And every training session, every time we stepped out on the court, it was if we do what we know how to do well, the result will follow. And everyone bought into that. 
But, um, mm. So the first game came, we, we went out there, we were fearless, we were resilient, we as a group knew that this was our goal and this is what we needed to do. So we stuck, stuck to the game plan, stuck to that belief in each other and, and as I said, the result will come. So the first game, game went and, and we came out, we won that. We were like, whoa, <laughs> what's happened here? So, and, and after that game, it was a case of, okay, yes, you've done the first job, but there's still two more games to go. So then we went out, played the second game. Australia came out even stronger and harder, but again, stuck to the process, we won that one. Even after the second one, again, it was like, well, we've still got another game. So yes, we've won the series, but you still want to put out that next performance yeah, again yeah. for that last and final game. And what the team did really well was stay in our bubble. So even when all the excitement was going out on around us, we said, we're playing for each other. We know what we want to achieve. Now go out and deliver it. And we won the last yeah, one as amazing. well. <laughs> and is that something that has continued on, do you think, within netball and that squad, that yeah. unity? Yeah, and, and the squad's changed um, over. And obviously the girls did so well in the Commonwealth Games. I, I think what start that was where the belief started yes yeah and where it was now possible it wasn't just a one-off game where we beat australia new zealand which we had done in the past it was like three solid games um and they weren't this um how do you put it this yeah unobtainable uh, goal yeah yeah, yeah 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 they were just a, a group of players two arms two legs just yeah. like the rest of us um who played netball. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned the Commonwealth Gold there. I can't really have to interview you and not talk about that, but I guess how did that feel very yeah. openly about yeah. not being part of that, but yeah. watching that this year? How was that for you? I, last year, last year, it's not last year. Last year now, yeah. Just had a year, yeah. year anniversary, didn't they? Um, well, I won't lie. Obviously, you, you, I wanted to be there. Yeah. I, I, as in, in terms of, I would have loved to got a to have had a gold medal um, at the Commonwealth Games. Um, I've been to two previously where we got the bronze, but at the same time, it wasn't my time. Yeah, I, I felt like I had achieved everything that I wanted to achieve in netball, and hence why I retired when I retired. Yeah. So um, it was just lovely to see the, some of the girls that I played with go out and, and do what they did and, and do so well. And for the sport of netball as well, oh, amazing, it's it? done massive things yeah. for it. And so many more people are now getting behind it and getting involved. So, oh, I, yeah, as, as much as uh, you get that pang of when you see it and you're not yeah. with there, because I, I love a party as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I know they would have had a fab party afterwards. I know that, yeah, I, I, I wasn't meant to be there. So it, that, it was all fine. Where did you watch the game? Did you at home watching the game? No, I was actually in, um, oh, in Europe. What, what, where, what's it called again? Ghent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, me and Steve, oh, <laughs> we'd gone yeah. to watch him. We were on holiday. Oh, so, um, and early, luck- woke up early. It woke, and literally, know, yeah. both days woke up early. Luckily, they had BBC on the, <laughs> yeah. on the TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, that's how I watched oh, it. Excellent. Yeah, Get, getting up early when I was on holiday. And uh, any predictions for this summer of the World Cup? I think it's going to be so tight. I think you've got... The quad series has shown us yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with um, England are just... They're still on this mining on this high, yeah. so I'm so backing them. <laughs> and you know, Australia will be hurting yeah, <laughs> that yeah. they um, they didn't get through at the Commonwealth Games, and they'll be rejigging their squad. New Zealand are coming up now, and they've had a big rejig of their squad, but starting to find their feet again after we saw in the last quad series. And then Jamaica yeah, went there. Yeah. We've not seen them for yeah. a while, but you can't <laughs> underestimate they've them. Not been messed together yet. <laughs> exactly. They've got a few players out in New Zealand, yeah. Australia, and here. Um, and then South Africa, they yeah. they were England's Achilles heel and um, yeah, yeah came out with that victory. So it's going to be a real tight one. And I'm so excited to see some of the African natures coming, nations sorry, coming through yeah, as well. Yeah. Uganda, Malawi. Yeah. So, I yeah. watched one of the Malawi games with the girls at the Copper Box last year. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And you obviously played a little while now in, in New Zealand. Yes. A couple of years or so. Yeah. So do you feel, you, did, you weren't, didn't stay as long as some. some no. are, <laughs> uh, but how did you feel that affected your, your game and your yeah. confidence to play yeah. against Australia and New Zealand? Such a massive help. So I finished our season here and we won that with Team Bath and then went out. So I was I was there for four months. I was like, oh, you were there? Yeah, like, yeah. So, um, so I missed the first game of the season. For their season. For their season, yeah. yeah. So I played our final, so that meant I missed the first game of in the ANZ. So yeah. I played for the Northern Mystics. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. fabulous. Like, I literally got off the plane. And it was on at the time where netball wasn't so popular here. But, but over huge there. there isn't it? Massive. Yeah. Yeah. And even just walking through the airport, someone said to me, oh, you're Pamela Cookie. You've come <laughs> to play for the Mystics. I was like, how do you know this? <laughs> Um, and then I, I did a placement out there, so I worked for Air New Zealand. Oh, right. 
as well whilst I was there. Yeah. So the, the difference being again, so I'd, after a game at the weekend, my team would debrief the game with me. That's how, yeah. how big netball was in, um, in, okay. in, in over there. So, and again, it gave me the confidence New Zealand wasn't the players because it was the Australia and yeah, New Zealand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So again, it wasn't those players that you just see up there. They, they were just players. They were just players. Yeah, yeah. They, they were my teammates. They were the opposition. Um, so it was really, really beneficial for my game, I felt, in terms of gaining that confidence yeah. to play week in, week out at that top level and develop my skills and also know that that in some cases it wasn't much different. Yes, they weren't yeah. that far ahead of us, and it, yeah, it was good fun. And really, bring that really home good to fun. Me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and bring it back and help um, the other, my teammates back home. And that we've, as we talked through, you obviously you've always juggled that mm. career and, and playing netball as well, which is, must have been a challenge at yeah. times in terms of literal time mm. of one to the other. Mm. So, guess have you got any other thoughts or suggestions for athletes that are in that role now of mm. trying to? be a model employee yeah. and an amazing athlete as well it's time time management like for me it started quite early when I was at work or school I was at work or school so I made sure I put all my effort into there yeah. and then when I was at training or matches all my effort went into that and it, it's just you have to make life choices it, it can be done I, I'd, I'd get up at six to get to training in the morning then I'd go to work then I'd come back from work back to training to do those sessions and then at the weekend you were traveling for a game yeah, or playing a game so yes you have to make those sacrifices but I think the rewards way outnumber yeah, that yeah, yeah. and I guess the advice I give is that you just have to find what works for you you have to be prepared so um, yeah. I do. I did my Sunday cook-offs. Yeah. So I make <laughs> for a the week, for yeah. the week. Yeah, right, make a yeah. massive batch on a Sunday yeah. so you could freeze it. And so in, in the evenings, I just got one out of the freezer, put it in the microwave. It's such practical, sensible stuff to make sure you're prepared, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then you know you're eating good stuff, and yeah. you know you're yeah. And sometimes, um, like on a Friday night, you've got friends going out for dinner and then to a club afterwards. Yeah. I'll just go for the dinner part. Yeah. And um, or, but in the off season, you know, you can do <laughs> you can party. You can party, as I say. But um, yeah, it's just. You, you just have to be sensible and and it can be done I think it's just that planning beforehand yeah. and, and knowing and talking to people and I guess it would have almost been laughable for any of the male captains of football yeah. England football rugby cricket to have held down a full-time professional role and been a captain of sport too did, did that frustrate you annoy you whatever at the time do you think uh, it does get it did get a bit frustrating especially um, so at, when I was at University of Bath and like some of the footballers there were, were, were on way more than we were yeah. and, and in I think division whatever division they were yeah. yeah not playing internationally yeah, for yeah, example yeah. but um but we had great relationships with them and, and, and whatnot and as the season or the years went by they started to understand what we did mm. and they had a mutual respect for us so for me it's annoying that I'm not on millions of pounds <laughs> for whatnot but at the same time football rugby it's a completely different nature they're 80,000 stadiums yeah. they've got these massive sponsorship deals and um, how many more people currently watch them so I can't begrudge them that money no. because but at the same time I was like yeah and I guess it's that whole what we can do now to get women in sport on that same footing exactly. so it has the like, crowds and sponsorship and yeah. media coverage yeah. too yeah. definitely and that football and rugby that started however many years back yeah, yeah, yeah. we're just starting to progress that now and so we've got a journey to go on and I'm very sure we'll get there if we're just working on it now and, and it'll take some time. And uh, I know that you were um, director of netball for the uh, Seven Stars for a little while and obviously you're Sky Commentary now so how else are you involved with netball or are you? Is that probably enough actually isn't it in terms of netball at the moment? Um, so I do a little bit of coaching with yeah. some schools and some mentorship program um, with Mintridge. Yeah, Min yeah. Mintridge, yeah, yeah lovely chat. Alex, yeah, 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 really, really lovely. And, and, and just, oh, it's just great to see the kids' faces when I go in there and I do work with them yeah. and then I hear about what they've done afterwards as well. That's really lovely. Obviously, the Sky stuff I love yeah. and um, the other media stuff that I do. Um, it's what a weekend you've had this weekend. Oh, oh, the, the Easter, <laughs> big Easter yeah. weekend. Yeah. Such a great sport yeah. and it's great to still be part of it and be able to yeah. commentate it and on it and, and watch it. So, yeah, that's the, those are the bits that I still do. I don't play at the moment because I kind of had to go cold turkey yeah I was going to say that well do you think you will play in the future a bit of walking netball maybe in 20 <laughs> years time or something <laughs> exactly I think the mentality I've got though is I have to if I played I'd still want to be really good and yeah. competitive yeah. but to do that I need to do all the training beforehand yeah. and, and all that strength and conditioning we talked about earlier yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> 
and I just yeah I've not got the, this time or space and yeah. and and yeah so that's why I'm not playing at the moment and I guess you've been such an inspiration for young netballers my children included oh. uh, but what message do you give to young girls listening who will want a career at that early stage of their pathway yeah. what, what advice would you give first and foremost have fun like there's no point doing something if you're not enjoying it it will just become tedious and you won't do it to the best of your ability um my second advice would be listen to your coaches (laughs) and your parents (laughs) and your parents (laughs) definitely because um i i I wouldn't be where i am if i didn't have those strong articulate confident people to kind of help path that way and guide me yeah, yeah and show me the way and give me those bits of tips and when you're on a high celebrate with you when you're on a low know how to pick you up again So, yeah, definitely listen to those good people. Surround yourself with good people and work hard. Like, you have to put the hours in. There's no excuse for, you know, no other option really, is there? No, there isn't. And there's no easy ride. Um, That's what I was trying to say. No, that's exactly it, yeah. You have to just put that, that work in and whatever position you are find what makes you unique yeah yeah and develop that and in terms of uh, young BAME women in the community actually netball is an amazing sport and then it does feel perhaps a little more diverse than some of the other team sports that are out there was that were there role models that you saw as a young girl that inspired you to play in, in netball, so at my, when I was playing, there wasn't much on TV. No, no. So I didn't, so who... I ask you if you'd ever seen any professional netball or whatever, or televised no. netball when you were growing up. No, so nothing on TV. It was only when I went to the game, so I went to watch an England international yeah. with my school team. So I saw Denise Lewis yeah, yeah, on yeah, TV yeah, with athletics. You. And so she was who I looked up to. She was who I wanted to try and emulate and... Um, yeah, do Excellent. great stuff like Does she you. know that? Have you spoken to her? Told her that? Told her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've met her a couple yeah, of times. But, but yeah, try not to fangirl. <laughs> um, but but yeah. Support, it's so important though, isn't it? It's that next generation yeah. and then you on the next generation too, yeah, isn't it? So, yeah, Excellent. Yeah. And I go. I know you've talked about that whole um, working and being an athlete. I wonder whether you... Did you see yourself as an athlete that also had a career or were you a, a career woman who played sport too? Did you? How did you identify yourself, do you think? Yeah, good question. I think I saw myself as both. Right. They were, yeah, it was always equal footing. I put as much effort into both. Yeah. As, yeah to, so I never saw myself as an athlete and then I'm just on the side was work or no. work and then just on the side was an athlete because you just couldn't do that. No. Yeah, we were training pretty much full time. Yeah. Um, but around work. So, yeah, you just had to balance the two. And I, um, a couple of last questions. Obviously, the podcast called The Game Changes, and it's yeah. about fearless, inspiring, trailblazing women. So I wonder, when you look back in 30 years or so, mm. what do you think your legacy will be within this sport? What would you like it to be? Is it what, your playing career and all that you've achieved there, or do you think there's, there's more you'll be doing in sport in the future? I hope a lot more that I'll be Thank doing, you. yeah. So my, the playing side helped get me to that platform yeah. and um, I put a lot of effort into that and, and it was such great fun doing it and and helped me see so many different things and people all walks of life which I said again helps me with my other life yeah, as well yeah. and then now I did my Achilles just before the um, uh, Commonwealth Games in 2014 yeah, yeah. and that was a really tough year until my dad passed away as well and but then that was when I got my first opportunity doing the media yeah so yeah. when I talk about there's always there's things happen for a reason yeah, yeah. yeah. So if that hadn't had happened, I might not be doing all the fun, fabulous stuff that yeah. I'm doing now. So um, it's, it's just about going through different phases of your life and taking on all those key lessons and learnings and opportunities. Yeah. And so I've got my playing stuff. I've got the media stuff that I'm doing now. I've worked in with the seven stars in the business management yeah, of yeah. sport and trying to get that team off the ground. And so... I hope more will come again so I can keep developing that area to help promote women in sport and and the opportunities that people get to be able to do amazing things that they're so capable of. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks so much to Pamela for taking the time to meet with me and to share her story. I'm sure so much of it will resonate with athletes trying to balance their sporting and professional lives. It was lovely to chat with her and I can't wait to hear her share her expertise on TV later this month as England attempt to win the Netball World Cup on home soil. If you could spare a moment to leave a rating or a review for these podcasts, that would be fantastic. Ratings help us to increase the profile of the Game Changers podcast, which means more people will get to hear the stories of these incredible women in sport. And if you want to be sure you're the first to hear any new episodes when they're released on Tuesdays, please subscribe to the Game Changers podcast too. 
In the next episode, you'll hear from Joe Bostock, the co-founder and CEO of the Women's Sport Trust. Jo was awarded an MBE this year for her contribution to gender equality in sport. And when you hear her talk, it becomes very clear why this rather brilliant woman has had such a huge impact on the profile and funding of women's sport across the last six years. I love sport. I feel better about myself when I'm playing sport than almost when I'm doing anything. And that sense of being able to move and the joy of just strike. I like hitting stuff. When you hit a ball beautifully, it just, it just it's pure joy. There's nothing like it.